Well, greetings. <laughs> We're on to uh, November 5th uh, section of our class, and we're speeding right along. Um, just maybe to reiterate some of the things that uh, we've covered in this class. And I, uh, I had an interesting conversation with Bill Schrade, one of your peers in the class. Um, we're about the same age, and uh, um, he made the comment, and... Uh, it, it was kind of heartfelt for the most part. Hopefully, we're making a difference here in a lot of ways, but uh, this is not, you're not getting the same things you would in most farm management classes. And of course, there could be, you know, another farm management class after this if we were to actually fine tune and, and go into some of these with more detail. But, um, after being in business for you know the bulk of my life, and as I talked to Bill, his too, um, I'm not sure, certain that he agrees with everything that I say. I hope not, actually. But uh, uh, some of the things that I found that were just major, major roadblocks in small business while I was operating our companies, and uh, gossip for one can can be that. Uh, having effective meetings boy you know if having a skill like that and refining it and getting better at it is something that we can probably all do i just spent i'm on a couple of committees in our church our local church and uh holy mackerel if we could just get more effective at meetings <laughs> but you have to be patient with all this thing too and i i, I implore um, those of you trying to uh, uh, implement some of these tactics, um, they don't happen overnight. And your skill level in each one of them doesn't happen overnight either. And you're going to have to change it and mold it and massage it so that it works in your organization. Any of the things and advice that we've given and some of the... Uh, the videos that uh, I've put out there for you to to, to look at. So uh, there's no, there's, every organization is going to become themselves. They have their own personality, but there are some key things and elements within all of these things that uh, are worth considering and, and probably implementing. I mean, just the decision-making process and then going to uh, the hiring process, there's there's some similarities and some implementation of your decision making that goes in to the uh, hiring and firing. There's some um, you you can't have an effective interview process if you don't know your own mission or your people don't know your own mission. And one of the things that um, that I, I would ask you to do if you're right in the middle of it or you're thinking about starting up a company, maybe it's small right now, you're the only one that's involved in it, is as you add people, is that you, you keep them up to date on how you expect things to operate and that you train them in your ways. And if you don't have a way, <laughs> that's just like training them to do nothing. Uh, or to just employ their own tactics. How else would they know? So um, uh, giving them some responsibility initially in the interview process, especially as you add people on, will help you through your business career. At least that's what I experienced. And, uh, you know, it, it takes 20 years to become an overnight success. It takes a couple years to implement a proper interview process in order to get the right people. Uh, it may take four or five years to build up a network and have the file in your file cabinet that says, hey, listen, this is a, a person that of interest that uh, I'd like to hire and have onboard them onto my team, but I don't have a place for them right now. It's just me right now. But uh, resources that will be absolutely valuable to you in the in the future so um, we're on to balance sheets and income statements and hopefully 
you kind of bring things together. We've already talked about budgeting. Hmm. Expenses. Income. Okay. Uh, we projected and we put in what you've actually done. Your own expenses and your own income. And it's no different, except most of you, especially at this time of your life, if you're a little younger, you're going to have a lot more simplified process. I look at those budgets. You don't have all the line items filled out. That's a perfect time to learn. So, I mean, you can just expand that and grow with it as you implement the same processes of looking at your own data, things you have skin in, and looking at if there's any trends that, you know, you, you want to trend to the positive on these things. If you want to be a more profitable business, then you, you're going to have to take a look at what you've done and what you're doing. Project what you will do in the future. Track it so that uh, you can have some goals in mind if you want to become more profitable. And uh, I, I, it, again, I, I ask you to to understand that it's not going to come overnight. It may be just incremental. I mean, can you think about it? Um, I mean, just on a very simplified process, if you want to increase your profitability by 1% a month by paying yourself first in some of the ideas that we've talked about, that's 12% per year. That's a huge return. When you think about it, um, no, especially if you want to just take your, your cash and put it in the bank in a savings account at 0.04%, or do you want to get it out there working where it's doing 12% because of a decision I made to actually pull back 1% of the dollars that come in? Okay, and that's really simplified. but And you can get really complex with it, but you don't have to. If you start simply, you can go to a more complex uh, business analysis when it's needed. So, first thing, I'm going to have you take a look at what a what a actual business business balance sheet looks like with the assets and liabilities and the different categories, and fit them from your own perspective, your own data which the net wealth statement that you've been compiling monthly for the last couple of months, plug and play. Put those numbers right in there. Analyze it with the ratios that I've given you. Just a simple, just what I call down and dirty type of ratios to do a, a real simplified analysis on the balance sheet. You, Inc., it's your business. In this case, how you're running your life, are they, and and then you track them, and you you figure out whether you're trending up or you're trending down, and what do you? Then you can ask the question: What do I have to change, or or in order to make a difference and make that thing trend up? Okay, so um, hopefully you're kind of putting this thing together, and uh, and then I'm going to have you actually analyze a, a, a business that uh, um, we put together the spreadsheet, um, I, another colleague and I, and uh, it may not be that typical. <laughs> um, so you don't have any skin in the game as far as the projected um, analysis goes and the return on investment, the return on assets, but it should be interesting to you. And then uh, that by itself, if you if you just show what the return on assets, the return on equity, return on uh, those different ratios, one time deal doesn't tell you anything. Again, it's going to be trend analysis, so that you can take a look at it from one quarter to the next, or one year to the next. For most production agriculture, is usually about what we have for data. So. Um, don't do an exercise with your own business that doesn't give you any real useful data, is what I would say, other than when you're learning it. 
So you need to track that, but you have to know where you're at first, and then you start from there and track it forward. Um, you could analyze all kinds of past history, but I've always found that people, um, I, when they're when they're just starting out, pretty much you don't have any data, or if you've been in business for ten years and there's the data and the, all the income and expenses you have throughout your organization is just like it, it's hard to compile and put together and and that sort of thing. At least start with the current period, and then move forward. Learn as you get as you go forward. Um, it's it's a whole bit a whole lot easier to do that I feel and learn from what you've done in your most recent past rather than going back in history unless you have a lot of time in order to do that it could be an interesting um, but I, th I have an idea that most of us <laughs> kind of know <laughs> what we've done in the past what we want to do is improve from this day forward so um, this week um, there's just a really short quiz. I'm really proud of you. You, you guys are in the discussion forum and forums. Um, very kind, great uh, statements. I, that's what I, those things are for. Um, and I, I use those as a tool. Maybe it's laziness. It could be. But uh, I want you guys to talk amongst yourself just like you would in a regular class setting. So that's your chance in this totally online class to do that. And I try to stay out of it. Um, if you have any specific questions, though, um, I absolutely would honor those. And I, always, I, I, no matter what the question is, you can always call me, and I'll pick up as soon as I can. And uh, hopefully I've been doing that through the semester. Keep me accountable. On that note, um, about the well, 13th, 14th of November, I'm going to uh, not be as available through the end of the month. Um, I've got a couple of jobs that I've got to do. and They don't involve too much Internet access. I'll, I'll, try, I'll, I'll have my phone with me so that if you do email me something, um, I'll, I'll try to get back to you within a day or two. Um, not... Uh, it may take me a couple of days so in order to do that and I, but uh, hold me accountable to that that's what I signed up for so um, and uh, I just enjoy this class hopefully you're getting something out of it and uh, it'll make you more interested in small business I again I mean yeah the, the, the world the global economy is not that good the US is not doing that hot right now but there is some tremendous opportunities out there and I think uh, especially in agriculture so you have a lot to think positively about and uh, you know most of you being younger um, have a better ability to uh, incorporate technology uh, without saying but uh, also with a great moving forward with a positive attitude I mean small business doesn't move forward don't get started they don't uh, grow unless you absolutely do have if a passion and enthusiasm like you all do so I thank you for that you keep me going so I'll turn it over to you good luck with your balance sheet um, continue we're gonna we'll, you will turn in the net wealth statement at the end of the month again um, that will be one of your last ones for that one to do but keep it up um, maybe it, you convert it to a quarterly statement. I mean, it's, it's a gift. It was given to me. Uh, I've tweaked it a little bit, but, uh, hey, it's yours now. So, um, um, continue with that is, would be my advice. No, no marching orders after the semester's over. I may not have too much contact with you. But uh, the agreement also I made to you is that uh, if you ever get in a pinch or you have any other questions, you jump into business, go out and buy a bunch of cattle, you lease a piece of property, um, you're going back to the ranch, any questions like that. Uh, I may not have the answers, but I might have a network of people that can help you. 
Um, but uh, I'd love to be included in any of that sort of thing. So God bless. And uh, if you have any questions, give me a call. 307-272-4880 is my phone number. Um, and I try to, to keep up on all that. So take care.